If we do not possess the NIP number, even a private one that we were assigned when commencing our initial employment, we still have the ability to register a business entity. We are presently on the business.gov.pl website and at this location we opt for the choice to register a business activity. We choose the start option. We can familiarize ourselves with important information regarding the establishment of the business and move on. In the initial section we input the applicant's information which corresponds to our data. We specify our citizenship status. In the example provided, the required information includes Polish citizenship, followed by personal data such as first name, middle name if applicable, last name, maiden name if applicable, father's name, mother's name, and PESOL number. These details are necessary for the completion of the process. Place, i.e. city or place of birth. Then in the identification number field, we leave the option selected that we do not have an NI number, which allows us to start a company, choose a tax form and register with ESUS, but we will not be able to submit the VATR form and register for VAT yet because we do not have this NI number. And only when this NIP is assigned for Polish citizens, it is usually the next working day after submitting the application, we will be able to return to CIDG, choose the second option of changing data in the entry on the business.gov.pl website, indicate that we want to submit the VATR form and register for VAT. Do we possess foreign identification numbers? We do not possess an additional query concerning the marital community of property. Here we determine whether we have such a community, we do not have it, the question does not concern us or we do not want to answer. We indicate our identity document, most frequently it will be an ID card comprising the series and number of the ID card. We continue. We provide our residential address including the country, postal code, city, street, house number and apartment number and then save the information. We move on. Then we provide the data of our company, the full name of the company. In this full name, our first and last name must be mandatory, and additionally a proper name may appear here, for example. Jan Nowak Catering Services. Then the abbreviated name. Here we can repeat our first and last name or a proper name. Then we indicate the start date of business activity, for example. February 2nd, 2023, and we provide the estimated total number of employees including the owner, for us, it will be one, because we will not be hiring employees. We note that we do not yet have a Regon number assigned, and then we can provide contact information, for example. Email address and phone number that will facilitate contact with offices. We also note that we do not want these contact details to be made public on the CIDG website that is accessible to the general public. We move on. We need to choose our PKD code, which means determining our business activity profile and what our company will be engaged in. For example, that we will provide software-related services, we choose the PKD code, save. If required, we can select additional PKD codes. Here, they will be displayed in the form of a list. We proceed. The delivery address is the address where we desire to receive correspondence from the office. We can confirm the residential address here that we previously provided, or we are able to provide a new address for deliveries. We move on. Next, we have a question about the place of conducting business activity. If we possess a permanent location for conducting this type of business, such as a shop or office, we have the option to select the first two alternatives available to us. However, if we do not have such a place, we primarily work remotely from our own apartment, and then we opt for the choice that we do not have a permanent place of business. We move on. We indicate where we want to be insured. In our example, it will be ZUS. And we confirm the date from which we will be insured. This will be the date on which we commence our business activity. We proceed. We verify our tax office. Alternatively, by utilizing this choice, we can search and specify our tax office. We move on. We choose whether we will do accounting independently or with the help of an accounting office. If we provide the name of our office and the tax identification number of the accounting office with the help of an accounting office, we move on. We indicate the address for storing accounting documentation. Please proceed. We strongly emphasize that we want to continue and complete the additional data in CIDG. We want to apply to ZUS, the application concerns entrepreneur's insurance. 
And here we have the possibility of either registering exclusively for health insurance, for example, to avail a startup discount, or we can opt to register for preferential or large ZUS on the ZUA form. We opt for only the health insurance option and ensure that we indicate our intention to apply for a startup relief program. We indicate whether we have established the right to a pension and disability benefit and whether we have been granted a disability degree certificate. Then we must indicate the code of the profession we are practicing. To accomplish this, click on the link. In the field of name or code of profession, we input our job description. Then we select the option that is most relevant to the scope of work that we will be performing as part of our business operations. We replicate the profession code, we return to our form, paste the profession code and proceed with the next steps in the process. Next, we must select the appropriate NFZ branch. This will be the branch that corresponds to our place of residence, which is actually the branch designated for our province. Then we indicate our registered address, which is the place where we are registered. It can be an address that we have already provided before, and if it is a different address, we use this plus sign to add a new place and indicate our registration. We can share our email and phone, aiding in contacting Zeus for assistance and information. Then we submit a declaration of choice of tax form, and at this point we indicate either that we desire to use taxation according to the tax scale, or that we wish to be taxed with a linear tax, or that we prefer a lump sum tax as our preferred method of taxation. We proceed further. Then we are able to provide the bank statements pertaining to the business activity that has been conducted by us. At the start, we won't have a standard corporate bank account as the bank demands the company to be established, possess a tax identification number, NIP, and a national business registry number, REGON. However, we can revisit this form at a later time, make updates, and provide the bank account details of our company. If, however, we can and will use a personal account for business purposes, we can indicate such a personal bank account at the time of establishing the company. If we possess a bank account in Poland, it is an account that adheres to the IBAN format. Subsequently, we provide the bank account number with the prefix PL to ensure compliance. We proceed. We do not wish to include any representative. We state that we possess the authority to carry out business operations. We don't want to pause operations. In the field, we don't alter anything in the Receiving Office app. Summary message. We now see the documents filled out by us, the CIDG1 form and the ZUS ZZA form with the notification to ZUS. Simply sign these documents utilizing a trusted profile and promptly transmit them to the office at this moment.